Did you ever read a book or watch a movie where partway through you realize the author has kind of tricked you into rooting for the wrong character? It's actually a pretty effective literary technique. One of the most famous examples in literature is that of Paradise Lost by John Milton, where he describes Satan and his rebellion in, in such an effective way that you find yourself sympathizing and even admiring the devil. Then you become what's called a guilty reader as the story develops and you realize that you've been misled. In fact, Milton did this so effectively, there are still scholars who claim that Satan is the real hero of Paradise Lost, which of course he is not. They, they missed the point by a country mile. Now, there have been times I've read the Bible and found myself to be a guilty reader. For instance, in the parable of the uh, 11th hour workers, where there's some men that come early in the day and work all day, and, and then some come and work just an hour, and they all get paid the same at the end. And the ones who worked all day complain, say, that's not fair. And you know, I can't help thinking, well, no, that's not fair. It doesn't seem right, does it? And then I'm of course, rebuked by Jesus as he explains that this is a matter of the kindness, grace, and goodness of God. And I realize I have to change my way of thinking. Another example is found in 1 Samuel 30, where David and his uh, 600 men return home and find that their wives and children have been kidnapped and their goods plundered by Amalekite raiders. Of course, they immediately set out after them to try and get everything back. And partway there, 200 of the men find that they're just too exhausted to go on. And so they stay by the brook Basor uh, with a pile of equipment while the other 400 continue the pursuit. David and his men go ahead. They, they catch up with the Amalekites who are totally unsuspecting, and God gives them a great victory. They not only uh, defeat the Amalekites, but they get back every one of their wives and children, all their own goods, as well as the plunder from the Amalekites, which is a tremendous amount as well. So, now we come to the return back. Then we pick up the account in 1 Samuel 30, verses 21 and 22. Then David came to the 200 men who had been too exhausted to follow David, and who had been left at the brook Basor. They went out to meet David and to meet the people who were with him. And when David came near to the people, he greeted them. Then all the wicked and worthless fellows among the men who had gone with David said, Because they did not go with us, we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered except that each man may lead away his wife and children and depart. Now the Bible calls the complainers worthless and wicked fellows, so I guess I should have taken a hint from that. But still, I, I can't help finding myself sympathize, saying, yeah, that sounds right. Why should the slackers be given any of the spoil? But then we read on, and I'm convicted by what David says, and find myself a guilty reader. Verse 23, But David said, You shall not do so, my brothers, with what the Lord has given us, he has preserved us and given into our hand the band that came against us. Who would listen to you in this matter? For as his share is who goes down into the battle, so shall his share be who stays by the baggage. They shall share alike. See what David says? The credit for their victory goes to the Lord. They got their spoil, their goods, their plunder from the Lord. So what gives them the right to claim as their selves exclusively that which God has given them freely. After all, the 200 did not choose to be too exhausted to continue the fight, and in the event, God did not need them to gain the victory anyway. The 400 whom God did use to gain the victory ought to give the glory to God, not to congratulate themselves and condemn the others. John Milton, who wrote Paradise Lost, also wrote a sonnet about the blindness that afflicted him in midlife. In this sonnet, he worries and complains about his blindness, uh, feeling that it's going to thwart his efforts to serve the Lord and does not know how he's going to answer the Lord when life is over, not being able to serve him as he wanted. But he concludes this way, Doth God exact day labor, light denied, I finally ask? But patience to prevent this murmur soon replies, God doth not need either man's work or his own gifts. Who best bear his mild yoke, he serves him best. His state is kingly. Thousands at his bidding speed and post our land and ocean without rest. They also serve who only stand and wait.